I've got so much to thank him for. It's the only time we ever thank God for Thanksgiving. We're, we're way, way behind. Way behind. Y'all thank him every day, every single day. And I'm thankful for his blessings. Just how thankful we ought to be for just being saved, for living in this country, America, that we can just come out here and worship God like this. They ain't armed guards waiting on us outside, going to take us to jail. Well, we can preach and believe and sing and worship. My, my, how thankful we ought to be for our health, our strength, our Bible, our church, our pastor, uh, the good blessings of God on our life. My, my. Uh, I'm so thankful to be here tonight. Appreciate this church and uh, what it stands for. And our friendship with Brother Don has been probably 15 years or so. Uh, thank the Lord for him. And appreciate the opportunity to be in here. Uh, these other preachers being here. They all appreciate y'all. Brother Tuggle, Craig, Brother Tim. Other preachers maybe be here tonight. Thank you for coming. God bless you. God knows if we ever needed it, but we need it now. Yes, sir. I want to... Uh, you to take your Bibles this evening and open to the book of Genesis. And I will read about three verses of Scripture from three separate chapters here in the book of Genesis. In chapter 6 is when God told Noah to build the ark and that he would destroy the world because of the sinful condition that the world that got in. God's going to wipe out every living thing with a flood of waters. And God told Noah what to do. Now, he tells him to come in in chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me, in this generation. Now, the flood comes, everything happened. Now, look at chapter 8 and verse 1. Chapter 8 and verse 1. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. Now, chapter 9. Verse 1, God told Noah here, beginning his new life after the flood, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. I will preach tonight on the subject, the other side of the storm. The other side of the storm. When I use the storm here in the Bible, I'm going to be talking about the storms of life that we all go through as children of God. Most of the time when a preacher preaches on storms, um, I, we, I, we preach about how to, how to go through the storm, what, why the storm came, all the, the bad things about being in a storm. Because as you've heard it said, you're either in the storm or you're out of the storm, or fix them to go into the storm. Yeah. And that's about the way the Christian life goes. It's yeah. like the weather. God lets you see the weather. It clouds up, it rains, it gets pretty again. It clouds up, it rains, it gets pretty again. Life is like that. Right. Storms of life come. Right. And they come to all of us. Amen. Don't Amen. believe this modern day, name it, claim it, grab Amen. it, Amen. grab Amen. it, uh, gospel that teaches you that if, if you're saved, everything will always go wonderful. You will always prosper. You will never get sick. You will never uh, have uh, uh, dirty clothes or an ugly car. That just simply is not true. There's uh, plenty of places in Sudan. They don't have one clo no clothes no car. And Christians live like that all over the world. And tonight, what I want to talk about, uh, it's a little bit different angle tonight, and I'm going to talk about the other side of the storm. And I thought I would use the worst storm that the world has ever seen. And that is the great flood of the days of Noah. And God told Noah, he said, Now Noah, 
Uh, you know the story. He said, uh, I'm going to wipe out man that I've made on the earth. He said, their wickedness has come up before me. He, I'm not going to let it go no further. He said, I'm going to drown man. And you know the Bible that it said, uh, up until this time, a mist had come up out of the ground and watered the earth. And as uh, far as we know, it never had rain, fell, water fell in the sky. And uh, God told Noah it was going to rain. And he said it would rain, and it did rain. And it, uh, it, it, it was a, he told Noah, build an ark. He said, you build this ark and take your family and all your everything you have with the animals, and you go in that ark, and you're going to be in a storm, buddy, like you've never been in in your life. And Noah did that and obeyed God. And the day came when Noah and his family entered in. And you know the story. God shut the door. Uh, uh, the rain came down. The flood came up. Rain came down. The flood came up. And the fountains of the great deep were opened up. And 40 days and 40 nights it rained. And brother, it rained. I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, brother, them found that great deep opened up. It was coming down at the rate of about 30 feet an hour, probably. And uh, I mean, that water came down through there and it just washed everything out. It was a universal flood. It was uh, the, all over this world tonight. The world bears marks of a universal flood. It's very easy to see. I mean, that's the only way you can explain to find fish fossils all over the mountains embedded in them rocks. Uh, up there, you see them rocks straight up. Eat Jim going to the mountains, and all the rocks are all crooked, all bent out of shape. That's something that's just tore this thing all to pieces uh, at least once. And so we see the flood there that Noah went through. Now, I want to say three, three things about this tonight of what happened after uh, the storm. I want to talk about, first of all, tonight God did not fail him. God did not fail him. The Lord said, Noah, you come into the ark. I've always found that interesting. I'm sure all you preachers have preached on it. I love it. That thing was 450 feet long. That's a big one, buddy. That's a big boat. It was, and it was just a big old humongous box. Uh, under there. It, wasn't, it wasn't made to sail. It was made to float. It wasn't going nowhere. All it wanted to do was just float when that water came up. And you imagine a boat that big. Noah and his sons worked on that thing. Uh, you know, we, we, we assume 120 years. We don't know that. But I, 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 believe, you know, I believe he preached and, and, and worked on that ark all them years. And they pitched it within and without with pitch, just like tar. And they got it all on the inside and all on the outside. And, and, and know what, God, that thing did not leak one drop. I don't believe that thing had a leak in it nowhere. That's the only water, uh, water tight ship that's ever been built. Uh, an iceberg didn't destroy it. Uh, the rain came down. You talk about waves, a tsunami. Lord have mercy. Have you ever been in a, in a boat when it's in bad weather? I've been on one time. And I was down, uh, down below Florida somewhere. We was going somewhere on this uh, trip. I got on this boat. It was about, it was probably about twice as big as this auditorium. There's about a hundred of us on that. And we got up there and a storm came. And that thing started moving. Honest to goodness, people. I, I said, I was holding on to the side where I was sitting. We were sitting around like this, just like on, on beaches, like this, holding a rail. That thing, that water would come down through there and them big old waves would come up. And that thing go, vroom. You'd think he was turning over. You could look down there as the water. And they go, vroom. And look up there and there's the sky. And you go, vroom. There's the water. You think, oh, Lord, if I said, if I ever get out of here, I will never in my life get on another one of these things. Anybody stupid enough? I'd get out here in this weather like this on the ground. And I remember thinking, I thought, Lord, have mercy. It's awful. It's awful. But I'm telling you, brother, I know it was safe in that storm. God did not fail him. That thing didn't spring a leak and sink to the bottom. He said, come in, Noah. He said, I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to fail you. And I got news for somebody here tonight. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how bad it is at your house. I don't know what bad report you've had lately. I'm telling you tonight, there's a God in heaven that will not fail you. He will not fail you. He's God. He couldn't fail. He can't fail. God did not fail him. I like the story where it said, uh, 
stuff where he said, Noah, come thou into the ark. You know, you know, uh, that, that stuff like that right there just makes me know God wrote the Bible. Amen. Man could not have and would not have if a man had wrote the Bible. You know, there's 40-something authors, 1,600 years, uh, a period of time, and, and most of them didn't even know each other, and it don't contradict one time. I'm telling you, that's a book right there, buddy. That's a book. And, I, I, and Noah got in there, and the Lord said, come now, if any man, in the, any religious man in the world had been wrote, wrote that story, he'd have said, now God was up in heaven, and now he's going to drown the world. He said, all right, Noah, get your family and go into the ark. That ain't what he said. God said, Noah, come thou in the ark. That's the first invitation given in the Bible. You know the preachers know about the law of first mention. As many times uh, when something's first mentioned in the Bible, it sets the definition and tone for that throughout the Bible and history. Like the like a sinner, you know where the word sinner comes from, don't you? I uh, think Genesis yes, 13, sir. 13, Amen. the men of Sodom. That's, that's right. first part mentioned, sinner. That's uh, significant. Don't Amen. forget that. Uh, you know where the word uh, 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 love comes from? The first time love is mentioned over there in uh, Genesis 22, I think, uh, where Abraham offered up his son, uh, love his son, a father's love for his son. God so loved the world. Uh, and then just stuff like that. Over and over, the first time beer is mentioned. Uh, there, there, they carry the Bible. Beer, beer means a well. He drank a well dry. Most you drug addicts and beer joints around here don't know that. Uh, but anyway, uh, God said, "Come thou into the ark." And Noah said, "Okay, I'm coming in." Now you know what that meant. God, and God didn't say, "Noah, go in the ark." God didn't say, Noah, I'm going to tell you to do something I wouldn't do. I'm going to send you somewhere I wouldn't go. God was in the ark saying, come on in here. Yeah. I know him not long ago, he's having something at the church, and I had company coming over. There's a preacher coming to stay at my house. And it got almost church time, and I had to go. And I, I, I called him, I said, brother, where you at? He said, we're on our way. We'll be there in a while. I said, look, man, i got to go. I, I said, I, I've got to go. And I was, I was going down the road. And I, I called him. And I said, look, I'm already gone now. You just go on in and make yourself a home. I said, you go on in. The door's open. Now, if I'd have been in my house, I wouldn't have called him and said, go on in. I said, come on in. And then where I'm already at. That's what God told Noah. Come thou in the ark. I'm already in here. I'm telling you tonight, he didn't fail him. You've never gone through a battle that the Lord wasn't right there with you. You know, everybody here has seen that uh, footprints pulling, you know, that little, it ain't really pulling, but you know that footprint, little, little plaque. Uh, they say that... Uh, Willard Thomas wrote that. I don't know if y'all know you, Brother Willard, but he got, he, they, I saw he says, author unknown. They say Brother Willard wrote that. And it's about a man walking on the beach, you know, and he's going on the beach like this, you know, and all out there on the side of the ocean. And he went through a hard time in his life, and he's looking back on his life, and he looks, he says, but Lord, he said, you was with me all the way down through there. And during that hard time right there, he said, there's only one set of footprints. Why did you leave me right in that worst time that I've ever been in in my life? And the Lord said, you're wrong, son. He said, I never left you there. He said, it was through that time right there, I carried you. And I'll tell you, that's just exactly what it is. He picked him up and brought him through. Listen, there ain't been times in my life, Brother Don. There ain't been times in my Christian life. I, honest to God, didn't think I was going to make it, people. I thought I'd never get through this. I'll never make it. I'm a hell man. But I'm telling you, it felt like something bigger than me picked me up and just brought me through. A day he turned into a week. He turned into a month. Not turned into a year. First thing you know, he was headed on down the road. I'm telling you tonight, the Lord did not fail him. I would say, uh, the Lord never failed him. He never failed the martyrs. He never failed those that hazarded their lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. He never failed the widows that have prayed themselves to sleep at night with a drunken husband out running around in town. He never failed the little boys and little girls that trusted in him. Oh, uh, they didn't have parents or nobody to love them. God did not fail no one. I will say secondly tonight, number two, God did not forsake him. God did not forsake him. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Can you imagine four men, four women, and all them animals in that boat? 
over a year. I mean, you know, it rains two or three days. We're thinking, oh, Lord, is it ever going to quit raining? Three days, four days, five days, six days. There wasn't but one window in that thing, and it was straight up. God fixed it so they couldn't look out there at that world. They didn't need me looking out there. The only way they knew to look was up. And they looked, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained. And it, rained. And it rained 27 days. 29 days, 35 days, 36 days. I, I mean, can't you imagine? I can imagine Noah's wife said, Honey, it ain't never going to quit raining. Uh, we'll, we'll die right here in this in this ark. We're never going to make it. Uh, it we're ne I'm telling you, I just got the office feeling. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 and, and Shem's wife pitched in, and Jacob's wife pitched in, and Ham's wife pitched in, and next thing you know, they're all sitting around talking. Said, "Look, I, I mean, I mean, we done, we done all right getting in here and everything, Lord. It ain't never going to stop in 39 days, 40 days, and it finally." You know, it finally stopped raining out there. They had to float around for months and months and months. Listen, when you're going through a storm, uh, a, a year can seem like 40. Uh, it really can when you're going through the storm. That's why you people in here that's having everything, everything going good for you right now, be sympathetic. Be, be compassionate for people going through a hard time. Because you're not going to be next. And brother, sometimes a week can seem like a year. I'm telling you, I've been around and I think, Lord, why in the world I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. Why don't you have? But I'm telling you, brother, God never forsake. I like that song. That song, Noah got his guitar out. You got to know Hebrew to know this. Uh, Noah got his guitar out and, and Shem got his, got his mandolin out and uh, I, I Ham got the drums out and it's set up. And, uh, and uh, next thing you know, they started having a big time on there. I never thought that in my life. I mean, don't take that. In the dark of the midnight, have all in my face. Yeah. By the storms, how the bark yeah. and there's no yeah. hiding place. Yeah. The land doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. Hear my cry. Keep me safe. Till the storm passes by. And they all start saying, till the storm passes over. Yeah. Till the thunder yeah. sounds no more. Yeah. I'm telling you tonight, I've laid my bed at night before. I never will forget one night, Brother Don, many, many years ago. I was going through some hard time, and I mean some hard. I mean some time, but I got so low I had to look up and see the bottom. And the devil had me down. He had his foot on my neck. And the devil said, I've got you, Danny. You're never going to make it through this. You're never going to preach again. You're never going to live again. I've got you, Roy. And back in those days, it's a long time ago, when the Kamees had that song out called God on the Mountain. You remember that? And I'm going to turn my on Big Waggy every night. And I'd lay there in the bed and cry myself to sleep by myself. Laying there just me. And I thought God and everybody had left me. And I turned that radio on old pen come on there. And she said, I'm talking about in the valley. He's not God in the valley only. He's God on the mountain. Yeah. I'm telling you tonight, brother, just because you can't feel him don't mean he ain't that. I will say further tonight, God did not forget him. Amen. I said God didn't fail him. God didn't forsake him. Thank God God didn't forget him. You ever felt like God just forgot you? Eight months went by. Nine months went by. Oh, my Lord. It's easy. It's easy to feel like that sometimes when you've lost everything. It's easy to feel like that sometimes when everything's been jerked out from under you. When you get the divorce papers in the mail. When you lose that job. When the doctor says, come in here. We need to have a talk. I got some bad news for you. It's easy to feel like he's forgotten me. It's easy to feel like, God, I've tried to do right. Now, look what's happened. God, have you forgot me? 
me. I don't know what they felt. I don't know how they felt in that ark all them, all them months and months and months and months and months. Did you know it? sometimes it's easy to get to a place where you felt like the Lord just forgot me? I mean, it's been a year. I ain't felt his presence. I ain't had a prayer answer. I ain't been able to feel God. It just seems like this valley I'm in is getting deeper and deeper. I'm going to church and doing everything I know to do right, but it just gets darker and darker, and I can't feel nothing. I can't I can't feel his presence. I can't feel no power. I can't get no answers. I'm telling you tonight, God did not forget him. God, the Bible said in verse chapter 9, verse uh, 8, verse 1, but God remembered Noah. Yes. Noah found grace. But now I mentioned that song, Amazing Grace, while ago. John Newton wrote that song. You know, I'm sure y'all preached that, uh, told the story. He was on that slave trader ship, and John Newton was a wicked, vile, ungodly, wicked man. I mean, mean as a devil. And he heard some old Moravian preacher preach the gospel, and John Newton got under conviction and got saved. And brother, he he uh, he wrote that song. Sat down, he he became a Baptist preacher, and he studied one day for a message, and he studied about grace, and sat down and wrote that song, "Amazing Grace." How sweet the sound that saved a what wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. That's exactly what Noah found. Grace, grace in the eyes of the Lord. Next time you think God ain't God's forgotten you. Next time you feel like God's forgot all about you, just remember, you found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible said God remembered Noah. The Bible said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It don't matter if you feel him or not, he's there. It don't matter if you see him or not, he's there. Can I tell you something tonight? If you're a Christian, if you're a born again child of God, the Lord ain't never left you. And I got more news. He ain't going to. He ain't going to. He don't leave you. So finally, the thing come down, and God had a GPS, God's positioning system, whatever that is, global positioning system, what that's that supposed to be? Yes, sir. Well, oh, anyway, that's what God had that. So the Lord sees the water going down. And he looks down, looks down like that, down like that, down like that, down like that. And he just takes his finger and goes, pushes that arc over there, and it lands right on the Mount Ararat. And it lands up there on top, and there's to see it. And they all said, well, we're not floating no more. We, stay, we, hit, we, hit, we hit the ground, or we sunk or something. Show me we ain't done sunk, hit the bottom. No, no. No, so that said, God ain't forgot us. God ain't forsaken us. God ain't failed us. We're going to make it. We're going to make it through this. Yeah. Well, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. When the promises of God come through like that, you think, thank God I'm going to make it after all. Amen. They said, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. And all of a sudden, the day came when Noah opened that window. Bring him in, he popped his head out there a little bit. And he sent that old raven out there, and that thing flew around, and never did come back. And then he sent out the dove. Yep. Now, I will say three things quickly tonight about the other side of the storm. I'm done. The other side of the storm, we see sweet presence of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what that done is a picture of. Yeah. Yeah. That dove went out there, flew around a little while, couldn't find nowhere to set his foot down, and came back. <coughs> a few days later, Noah sent it out again. <coughs> flew around, couldn't find nowhere to land, come back. And then finally one day, the dove came back and had a little olive branch in his mouth. And Noah said, 
Uh, glory to God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. There's dry land out there somewhere. Yeah, all, the blood, all the branches have done sprouted. Woo. The dove brought back. They sent that thing. I'm telling you what, brother. You know the picture of the dove there. I like the story when John the Baptist looked up there and saw Jesus walking down uh, the hill of Sea of Galilee that day of the River Jordan. And he looked up there and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the Bible said Jesus came down to there. And he said, Now, John, uh, he said, I want you to baptize me. And John said, okay. He said, you ought to be baptizing me. I ain't got no, I ain't got no business baptizing you. And the Lord said, yeah, 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 you do. I'm fulfilling righteousness. Yes, right. I'm showing everybody else what they're supposed to do. Amen. And John Amen. said, all right. Can you imagine John as he grabbed the body of God incarnate? Of God incarnate, brother. And he held it out there and he said, now, now, Jesus, put your hand over your, over your nose here. And then whenever I let you down. And brother old John put him down there. He baptized him with water and went down like that. Here's God the Son coming up out of the water. There's God the Father up there in heaven. And here comes God the Holy Ghost in the form of a guy. And lands right on top of him. And said, this is my beloved Son in whom I will plead. That represents the sweet presence of the blessed Holy Ghost from God. I'm going to tell you tonight, hey, people, hey, I don't know what kind of storm you're in tonight. I don't know how bad it is at your house. But just as sure as you're yeah. what it is, the sweet power of the Holy Ghost of God is going to bless you and come to you. After this storm's over, he'll be right there with you. Amen. He's there with you now, and you just can't feel it. Amen. Amen. You'll feel it then. Now, I mean, we're not saved by feeling, but I thank God I feel something once in a while. Yeah. The reason some people don't feel nothing, they don't believe nothing. You believe something, you'll feel something. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saved because I feel something. I feel something because I'm saved. I'm telling you tonight, folks, the Spirit of God came. And then we see the second thing, not only the sweet presence, we see sacrificial praise. Yeah. God out. He said, storm's over. It's finally over. Woo! Hallelujah. Let's go, honey. I guess the Lord opened the door. I don't know. He didn't. No man could open it if God shuts it. So I reckon the Lord reached down there and unlocked it. All right, no, come out. They come out and walked around. And they're on top of Mount Ararat. And they're looking around and saying, the whole storm's finally over. Didn't know if we was going to make it or not. Thank God we made it. We made it through. The Spirit of God's here. And old Noah, the first thing he done, he said, Boys, run away and get me some of them big rocks. We fix them to build us an altar. We're going to church. That's the first thing we're going to do. He built an altar. That first thing they built wasn't built with a store. They didn't make a garden. They didn't build a house to live in. They said the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get down and we're going to worship. I'm telling you tonight, this is when it's on the other side of the store. Yeah. There's worship. On the other side of the people, I've sat in church and cried my eyes out before, and I thought, Lord, I'll never be happy again the rest of my life. And then it wasn't too long after that. I was up running around the aisle, shouting, running around the aisle, screaming and hollering. I couldn't, I couldn't feel better if I, if I tried. I'm telling you, there's worship on the other side of the storm. Amen. He looked out, and there was three continents. And he sent them boys one way, the other way, and the other way. There went Shem to Asia. Uh, the Semitic peoples, Semitic, yeah. or any Semitic. Right. Japheth went north and went into uh, to Europe. And Ham went south and went into Africa. And ladies and gentlemen, them boys populated the earth and there was worship yes. and praise on the other side of the storm. Amen. 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 And then there's a sure promise. It sure was. God said, look here, no. He said, uh, I'm going to give you a token. And I ain't never going to do this again. Amen. It's over, son. You stood the test. You've made it through the storm. You've made it through the hard part. I was thinking about Brother Bobby. Is he be back here somewhere? So can he hear me? Yeah. I thought about him. I thought, Lord, have mercy. 
But if there's anybody in here in the storm, it's him. Amen. And there may be others in here that are going through some other kind of storm. I don't know. Financial, marriage trouble, stuff like that. I got news to you tonight. God didn't fail them. God didn't forsake them. And God didn't forget them. I'm going to tell you tonight, Brother Roddy. I'm going to tell you the people tonight. God ain't going to fail you. God ain't going to forsake you. And God ain't going to forget you. sacrificial praise and on the other side of the storm they had the sure promise yeah. standing on the promises of God listen God said to Noah he said I'm never going to do this again my sister passed away with cancer she's 40 years old and I saw her fight a long, hard, hard battle. She was really, really healthy. Doctors said that worked against her. Because her body fought it and fought it. And I remember my sister, I go up to see her. And, and my mom was take, took care of her the last six months of her life. And one day she told mom, she said, Mom, I hope I never have to go through this again. And mom said, you won't, honey. You don't ever have to go through this again. And people, we're going through our trials now. We're going through our battles now. We're going through our heartache now. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. On the other side. seen that rainbow. God put that bow. We call it rainbow. God said a bow in the sky. And he said that prompt, that rainbow is to give you the assurance that I'm never going to do this again. By the way, that's one way you know it's a, a universal flood. If it's a local flood, that was a lie because there have been plenty of local floods. Whatever that was there, God said it wasn't never going to happen again. And it ain't. Next time it'll be fire. Yes, sir. But he said this. He said, there's your bow in the cloud. Yeah. Now they say it takes two things to make a rainbow. It takes sunshine and it takes cloud. And it's after the rain, you'll see the bow in the cloud. Because I, I can imagine, if he hadn't done that, what do you think Shem, Ham, Japheth, their, their wives, every, the next, next weekend when it clouded up? Because see, before that, everything was different. That's why people's lifespan got shorter immediately right after the flood. Remember, they lived six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years before the flood. And then immediately it dropped to 200, then to 100. Now we're, we're down to 70 because it was so mean. And, and uh, uh, it just kept getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> and do you know what? The Lord said he's shortening them days, but, uh, but uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, anyway, anyway, the Lord said, I'll set that bow in that cloud. And that's a promise. I'll never do this again. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, a rainbow is like a high circle. But if you go, if you get up high enough in an airplane, I don't know if y'all have ever been seen this in an airplane. You go up there high enough, you can literally see it make full circle. Looking down on it. Down here, you only see high. And John, I think Revelation 2, 4, as he says, saw that rainbow round about the throne like it was a circle. And if it was, he's saying it's in that whole circle from there. That means to see that's the promises of God. You only see half of it here. You have to get up there yeah. and see the rest of it. We, we, listen, people, we trust it now. We'll understand it then. Earth's a place for trust. Heaven's a place for understanding. Well, in the sweet by and by, 
We will understand every trial, every heartache, everything. We have you ever had something happen to you? I'm sure Brother Don knows, Ted knows. You know, saying, why in the world this happened, God? Why did this happen? What in the world did this have to happen for? We don't know. Earth's the place for trust. Heaven's a place Heaven. for understanding. And to see the full rainbow, you have to leave earth to see the whole thing. Heaven. I'm saying tonight, I don't know what all God's done. I don't know what all's happened. I know when I get to heaven, I'll see the whole picture. Amen. And it's all going to make sense. Yeah, praise God. As a matter of fact, the word Ararat means exalted place. High up. That means that Noah was walking on higher ground when he came out than he was when he came, went in. Amen. Amen. If you'll let the Lord lead you and bless you, you'll, you'll come out higher on, on spiritual higher ground Amen. after you storm than you was when you went in. Amen. I'll never forget the first real bad, really, really bad ones I went through. Word spread around. People started praying for me. Ed McAbee, one of my mentors in the ministry. He was down at Faith Baptist Church at Sammy Allen's camp preaching that week. My phone rang. He said, Brother Danny. I said, he said, this is Ed McAbee. My heart jumped because I thought, man, he's way down there preaching at a camp meeting. He's thinking about me, a young preacher up here in North Carolina. And he said two things I had never forgot. And the Holy Ghost burned them in my heart. I've never forgotten. I've, told, I've tried to help thousands of people with this. He said, trouble will make you bitter or it will make you better. Amen. Depending on what you do with it. And he said, we're not responsible for other people's actions. We're just responsible for our reaction. Amen. And I've never forgot that. And I thought, you know what? By the grace of God, I want to come out on the other side of the storm on higher ground. Amen. Than I would want to win in. Amen. The other side of the storm. Let's stand by our head and pray.